Hello, I'm Dr. Herman, and welcome back here for another video about your chronic condition. And I want to share with you right now about Lyme disease. And maybe some of you have heard about Lyme disease, maybe some of you have not heard about Lyme disease. But we've got to understand that there is an infection that can cause an immune reaction in your body, an infection from a tick bite. You don't have to live in the wilderness for this to happen. Ticks exist everywhere in the world. Okay, so what I'm going to share with you here, if you can see this picture, this shows a, an animation of a tick on skin that bites into the skin and it releases uh, Borrelia into different tissues, Borrelia from the tick. And also what happens is immune suppression because of a protein in the tick saliva. So now the immune cells are not as active as they may have been before this injection of the tick saliva protein. So if the immune system is suppressed, maybe it can fight other infections and allows other infections to become more uh, uh, dominant in the system to cause you more stress, more inflammation of tissues and cells. This causes an activation of an inflammatory condition and it actually causes a breakdown, and this shows the brain here, it causes a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Now let me step back because in another video on this website, I have shown you about the barriers of your body. You've got skin as a barrier. Your skin protects you from an infection. If you get a big open wound in the skin, you probably, hopefully, want to clean it and stitch it up and bandage it so no infection gets there. Because if you do get infection, you can actually turn gangrene, you could lose a limb, you could die from an infection. Well. Besides skin as a barrier, we have a lung barrier, so our lungs are supposed to protect us from any infection that we inhale. Our intestines are a barrier, and we also have this invisible blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is supposed to work to keep out infections, so we don't get bacteria in the brain, we don't get viral expressions in the brain, we don't get parasites into the brain, okay? So the tick bite can cause immune suppression, can cause inflammation, and it can actually cause a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. Some of you who know about Lyme disease already, some of you who are already diagnosed with Lyme and you're still fighting this and you don't know how to get rid of it, we have a program for that. Some of you have never heard of Lyme, so this is the first time. Some of you have been tested and it has come up as you're not infected. Well, let's be careful about that. So according, and then I found this, and there's a lot of other research websites that you can look up false negatives with Lyme tests. But let's understand some things here. First of all, the lab, what I've heard and what I've read is the lab that you go to in the hospital or the general blood laboratory only has one species of Lyme that they can run. There's more than one type. There's more than 10 types. There's one lab in the country called Immunoscience out in uh, Beverly Hills, California. And these are discoveries they use in this lab, discoveries that were made by and patented under the supervision of Dr. Aristo Vajdani. He is the immune scientist that I've studied under in the neuroimmunology program through the neurology school I went to. And let's look at this. Nine reasons for false negative Lyme disease blood test results. And this comes from the Lyme Disease Foundation brochure, okay? So number one, it says antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi, and there's more than just Borrelia burgdorferi out there. Antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi are present, but the lab is unable to detect them. That's a possibility. Not all labs are the best in the world. Number two, reason for a false negative Lyme test. Antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi, or BB, may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the patient is currently on or has recently taken antibiotics. The antibacterial effect of antibiotics can reduce the body's production of antibodies. So what they're looking for when they're running the blood test is do you have antibodies against Lyme? Against, in this case, Borrelia burgdorferi, but there's more than Borrelia burgdorferi. So if you don't have antibodies showing up against it, then they say you don't have a Lyme infection. You understand that? So if you've taken some antibiotics that make your antibi antibodies actually show a lower number than what would show that you have an infection, maybe that's a reason for a false negative. False negative reason number three, antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the per patient is currently on or has previously taken anti-inflammatory steroid drugs. These can suppress a person's immune system, thus reducing or preventing an antibody response. P. 
people I've seen taking anti-inflammatory steroidal drugs, maybe a lupus patient, I've seen that. Uh, and other chronic inflammatory autoimmune diseases for thyroid disease and sometimes for fibromyalgia. Number four reason for a false negative. Antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi, again, there's more than Borrelia burgdorferi out there, may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the patient's antibodies may be bound with a bacteria with not enough free antibodies available for testing. So that means the soldiers that are going out to try to attack this, they're actually sticking to other bacteria and there's not enough antibodies free in the bloodstream to show that there is a problem with Lyme. So we see that there's a lot of false negatives that can occur and maybe you really do have a Lyme and you've got to go to somebody with certain skills to be able to pick it up without just depending on a blood lab. For this reason, some of the worst case Lyme disease tests negative too much bacteria for the immune system to handle. Number five reason. Antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the patient could be immunosuppressed for, another, for a number of other reasons and the immune system is not responding or reacting against the bacteria. There could be immune suppression, maybe the person's on chemotherapy drugs, maybe the person's on uh, besides the steroids, I mean, there's, there's a number of drugs that can actually uh, suppress the immune system besides antibiotics and besides chemo and besides anti-inflammatory drugs. Number six reason for a false negative. Antib antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the bacteria has changed its makeup, limiting recognition by the person's immune system. So these critters are actually pretty intelligent. They can actually change shape. It's like going under plastic surgery and looking like somebody else. They can actually do that. And their immune system says, I don't see that anymore. Now I see this, but I don't recognize that. So maybe you get that blood test taken at the time where it's not showing up because of the, like a plastic surgery effect on that infection. Number seven, antibodies may not be present in detectable levels because the patient's immune response has not been stimulated to produce the antibodies. So if the blood test, well, excuse me there, let me come back on here. Sorry for that. So we see we're real, I'm a doctor, I'm not a professional cameraman. But the antibodies may not be uh, present because the body has not taken enough time to produce the antibodies. The blood is taken too soon after the tick bite. So if your bite occurred a few weeks ago and you're feeling something, maybe it's not showing the immune response yet, but you could be feeling bad. Please do not interpret that statement as implying that you should wait for a positive test to begin treatment. Well, how do you know what treatment there is? So we're not just guessing. We don't want to just guess and say you have it just because the lab says no because then we're hearing about false negatives. We have to have good concrete evidence of this. And there's a certain kinesiology test, these vials that actually can show us, do you have Lyme or not? And then we know exactly what to use to counteract them. Number eight, antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme because the laboratory has raised its cutoff level too high. So when you look at a lab's ranges of low to high, one to 10, let's say, if the 10 is too high and it really shows up as a nine, well, that lab is just using their own ranges. They're making up their own numbers. So we've got to use a very tight, narrow range when it comes to what that lab is really reading as opposed to what they're creating as a bell curve of who has the infection or not. Does that make sense? So let's say really a cutoff point should be eight, but your lab says 10. And if you're falling at 8.5, well, you're not, you're not positive because we say it's 10. And that one lab may be different than another laboratory's range of a cutoff point. Number nine, antibodies against Borrelia burgdorferi may not be present in detectable levels in a patient with Lyme disease because the patient is reacting to the Lyme bacteria but is not producing the right bands to be considered positive. Listen, there are different types of Lyme infections. There's different types. There's different species. There's different immune responses. With kinesiology testing, we can actually do these muscle tests on the body. And we can find out using vials of these infections and see if your body really shows that it's, re that it's, that it's getting weakened. When we bring something into your, 
in your body's energy, your space, and it's got that Borrelia or, or another kind of Lyme infection, and that matches your infection, your body's going to appear very weak to us. It's gonna go from strong to weak in seconds. And then we can actually figure out what species that is. We can look that up on the internet. We can tell you more about it. But we can also figure out exactly what to bring into your body that's gonna fight that. But when it comes to Lyme infection, we've gotta be careful. We've gotta use the right ingredient. There's different ones out there. It depends on you. You're an individual. Not everybody uses the same natural support to help their immune system fight this infection, but we also need to use the Rife machine, R-I-F-E. Look it up, it's on my website. I've got videos about it, about Rife on there, but you've got to understand, Rife we can actually use, and you may need to get one of these machines and keep it at home and get the right machine, not the wrong one. There's different brands out there. People are selling cheap ones that say it does the same as the expensive one, and that's just not true. So, and there's more about that that I've got on the part of my website about Rife. But we need to be able to do therapy every day to be able to effectively, safely uh, uh, have your body respond better and overcome this, this uh, infection, okay? That's all I wanted to share with you in this video. Please look forward to more videos coming and I look forward to helping you. Thank you.